What's up, y'all? This is Jake Berkey from BerkeyRacing.com, bringing you a Rock Rides Tech Tip video. Today, we're going to talk a little bit about disc brakes, and we're going to install a kit for a gentleman who's won our disc brake contest on our Facebook page, Jake Berkey Riot Buggy. Thank you to Lugnut 4x4 for giving us the kit. This thing is sweet. These guys are going to love it. We're heading to their house right now. We're going to talk it over with them. Then we're going to take the buggy back to my shop, and we're actually going to do the install. So check it out. Alright guys, I just got to Russell and Russell's shop. I want to introduce you to these guys and first of all, congratulations on winning because that's got to be huge. You guys put it on there, you know, your Jeep and the picture and everything. We were able to find you guys and congratulations on winning. That's, that's great. So uh, congratulations to these guys. Lugnut 4x4 hooked us up and uh, can't be happier to be here to be able to tell these guys that we're bringing this vehicle over to our shop to install it. So tell us a little bit about yourselves, Russell. Alright, I'm, uh, I'm Russell. This is Russell three. I'm Junior. He's the third. Uh, I got him in the Wheeling when he was, before he was born, we had a Bronco and uh, he just came up with it. We'd ride around in car seats and we went all over Teleco. I started carrying uh, Harley, Kentucky, everywhere. When he got big enough to reach the pedals, he was my driver. That's great. So, uh, good stuff. That's awesome, man. You know, four-wheeling is a huge family sport and this is a perfect example. You've got a father and son who go out and four-wheel together, work together in the shop and that's what it's all about, you know, people bonding and doing all this stuff together. So definitely congratulations on winning the contest and uh, we'll get everything loaded up, head over to the shop and get started. What do y'all say? Sounds good. Sounds good. All right, great. <laughs> Obviously the first thing that you have to do is get the vehicle up in the air and remove the lug nuts to take the tire off. The second thing that you're going to have to do is take the axle shaft out. In order to do that, you're going to have to remove these bolts right here on the outside. So we're going to take these bolts off, but we positioned a pan underneath because as soon as you pull those bolts off, oil is going to come from the galley and start leaking out. There's actually a couple ways that the bearings are held onto the spindle. In this particular scenario, it uses a spring clip with a retainer which is called a keyway. The easiest way to get those off is with a pick and a magnet. Alright, now that we have the retainer pulled off the outside of the spindle, the next thing that we have to do is remove the spindle nuts. Now, there's special tools that are made for it. If you look at this one right here, this is from Summit Racing. It has six different little tips that stick off with a centering hub. That'll go inside the spindle. This will lock into the locking nut and actually slide it off. If you don't have that tool, a regular punch can be used. On the outside, you can punch it around in a circle and spin it off. Perfect. Okay. With a drum brake setup, a lot of times what happens is the drum pads will actually wear into the drum. And what happens is it will cut a groove. And when you try to take the drum off of the backing plate, it will hang. So one of the things that we do is go in and try to mess with the adjuster to pull the pads in, but sometimes the, even the adjusters are rusted up. If you run into that situation and you don't plan on using the drums anymore, don't bust your tail trying to get it all put together and pulled apart. Come back here in the back, take your cutting torch and cut around the four bolts on the outside of the axle housing and just take the whole entire assembly off. These ones came off pretty easy, so we're going to pull these things right off. Now that we have the drum pulled off the backing plate and the, and the brake pad assembly, if you look inside right here, there's four bolts that go to the axle housing. You're going to take those four bolts off and pull this whole entire assembly out as one. You don't have to actually disassemble any of this. Just take these four bolts off right here and pull and everything will come off as a unit. The next thing that we're going to have to do is knock the lug studs out of the drum. What I recommend doing is using a hammer that's made out of brass, position it over the lug stud, 
and then hit it with another hammer. What that's going to do is it's going to keep your hand on the line of fire versus using a punch where if you slip you hit yourself. When we pulled these hubs off, we noticed that the seal was leaking. One of the things that a lot of times happens is the seal starts to wear into the spindle and creates a groove. And there's different ways that you can address that. One thing that you can find at a parts store is called a ready sleeve. If you have that groove that's cut into your spindle, you actually slide a piece of steel on there that's a really thin piece of steel, maybe a couple thousands. You glue that on maybe with some RTV sealant or some Loctite, and then your sealing surface becomes on the top of that versus where that old groove is. Now Russell here showed me something that is really cool that I didn't know. This is off of a newer model Escalade. This is a new style seal and if you look really closely, the seal itself slides onto the end of the spindle and stays still. And then the seal slides on the outside and it's all one unit. So if you have the situation where you have the groove inside there, you can take the seal, put it up on there, and when you get done, the seal is actually sealing on itself. The part number for this, is 710568. All right, we've got the hubs off, but they're really rusty. So we're gonna take a grinder, we're gonna clean a lot of the mill scale off of them, then we're gonna hit them with a wire brush before we put some paint on. All the components that you get with the kit are gonna come with a natural finish. You're gonna to wanna to paint them up before you put them on. We just got everything painted up and we used an engine enamel. The reason we use an engine enamel is because it's a high temperature paint. It'll keep from boiling off whenever the brakes get heated up. It also resists chemicals really well. So if you spill a little bit of brake fluid, it's not gonna eat the paint finish off unless you let it sit for a while. When you install the backing plate on the actual spindle, you can position this in a many of different uh, spots because of the different holes. Now what we like to do is position it in the back because it has less probability of getting hit by throwing rocks from the front. One of the things that you have to make sure is that when you put everything together, your brake bleeder is at the top. Otherwise, you'll get air trapped inside the caliper and you'll never be able to bleed the brakes out. The next step that you're going to have to do is you're going to have to put your lug studs back into the original hubs using the rotors. So you're going to position the, the hub upside down like this with the seal facing upwards. Then the rotor will be placed on top. Line up all your holes and you're going to want to go ahead and set these lug studs in all the way around in a circle. Once you get these all the way around in a circle, you want to tap them in lightly so that everything is centered, and then you're going to use a cross pattern and pound them the rest of the way down. So you'll hit here, then come over to here, and then come over to here, and you're going to use a cross pattern and keep on going back and forth all the way around. That'll ensure that the rotor seats perfectly down onto the hub. Now that we have our backing plate or our, our caliper bracket installed, the one thing that you're going to want to pay attention to is when you bolt your hub assembly back onto the spindle, there's a machine surface here that the bearing slides up on. If you try to torque it down, a lot of times it gives you a false reading. You have to tighten the nut up to what factory specifications say are 50 foot-pounds to ensure that the bearing is slid all the way against the back side of the spindle then back it off and then get your final bearing preload. So we're going to install this right, and get our washer and then put our bearing spindle nut get it right there Once we get this all the way installed, we're going to do our final torque with a torque wrench to ensure that the bearing is all the way seated. Now that we know that the bearing is seated all the way against the back side of the spindle, we're still going to back this off about a quarter of a turn and check for the proper bearing preload by spinning this and making sure that it spins freely. The spindle nut has recesses in it to accept a Woodruff key that's actually cut into the spindle nut and into the spindle. 
You install the Woodruff key back where it was supposed to go to keep the spindle nut from backing out and then put your keeper ring back in. Rotors are shipped with a really light coat of oil on them to keep it from rusting while they're on the shelf. So before you put your brake pads and assemble it all back together, you're going to want to take some mineral spirits or some alcohol and wipe down the brake rotor to remove that coating. Now that we have the caliper installed, you're going to take your pin, slide it through the back side of the disc brake bracket all the way through the caliper into the other side and torque them down. Next thing that we're going to do is we're going to install the axle shafts. You may have to wiggle it up and down just a little bit to get the splines to engage properly in the differential. And then reinstall your bolts. More than likely if you're installing this disc brake kit on your vehicle, you have a hard brake line that goes from the center over to the side. In our particular case, we opted to go with a full stainless brake line, so all we have to do is hook this up. But if you have a regular brake line, the first thing that you're going to have to do is cut the brake line using a brake line cutting tool. Uh, once you get that cut to the length that you need so that the stainless steel brake line that comes in the kit will go from the brake caliper over to where you've made the flare, you're going to want to slide the brake nut down onto the tubing. Once you get the flaring tool clamped on the outside of the brake line, you tighten it down and then this flaring tool will actually go over the top and when you tighten it down it'll produce a nice flat flare. Once that flare is done you can install your brake line onto your original metal piece of tubing and then come over to your brake caliper. Alright guys the install came out absolutely beautiful. Everything went together perfect. We had a great installation. It didn't take much time. Huge thank you to Lugnut 4x4. These guys really knocked it out of the park with this install kit. Congratulations on you guys winning our contest. It was fantastic to meet you guys. Glad y'all could come down. Sorry it was so hot. You know, we're sweating <laughs> like pigs out here, but we had a really good time. And from Russell and Russell, y'all keep it good. Have a good time, and we'll see you on the trail. Thank you. All right, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this Rock Rods tech tip video on how to install a disc brake kit from Lugnut 4x4. If y'all liked it, make sure you subscribe to Busted Knuckle Films, Rock Rods, and Jake Berkey Riot Buggy on Facebook. Check out some of the links that we have popping up over here. We've got some newer episodes and some older episodes that are going to be coming out, so make sure you check us out. We've got our websites listed where you can get some merchandise, Riot Buggy shirts, Busted Knuckle apparel, and we've got a whole lot more coming, so y'all stay tuned.